What's up? It's Michaela, and today we're going to be watching the 2010 live action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. Why? I don't know. Today seemed like as good a day as any to suffer. But with the new Netflix adaptation coming out, I, I really wanted to rewatch this. I think, I think we all really need to collectively remember what a truly bad adaptation looks like. Okay, let me just, um, let me just, um, mentally prepare to press play. Okay. Start off really strong in the opening here, where they replaced the actual Chinese writing from the original animation with what did they replace it with? Oh yeah, random squiggles. Why? Why? Prosperity. Here's how I imagine the production days. meeting for this opening Four went. Nations. How are we going to explain the entire backstory of the Avatar and the war and all this exposition to audiences? Well, I mean, the original cartoon has a well-written, concise opening monologue that they play at the beginning of every episode. We could just use that. No, Harold, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. Do we all agree Harold's an idiot? All right, what's this? What are these symbols at the beginning? That's, um, that's Chinese, sir. Right, so we're gonna do like a... Ooh. It's so much better, isn't it? If you're from the Water Tribe, why are you white? Oh my God, Karen, you can't just ask people why they're white. You know what's really funny is that I thought Noah Ringer, who plays Aang, was half Asian, up until last year, I fully believed that. Because when I saw people talking about the new Netflix show and saying things like, oh, it's a good thing they cast Aang as an Asian, finally, I, in my head I was like, oh, but you know, like, Noah Ringer is half Asian, we shouldn't erase that. I Googled it and I was racking my brain trying to figure out what in the Mandela effect had me believing that this kid was 100% half Asian. Was, had me 100% believing that this kid was 50% Asian. Turns out what I read was M. Night Shyamalan saying in an interview, quote, to me, he, Noah Ringer, felt mixed race with an Asian quality to him. Sorry, I just, in case you didn't hear that the first time, he felt mixed race with an Asian quality to him. What in the Emma Stone? But if you want to talk about wild casting, it is very, very important to me that everybody knows Jesse McCartney was originally cast as Zuko. Jesse McCartney! Next! <laughs> Alright, hey, what's up dudes? It's, uh, it's, it's Jesse McCartney. Oh, Mr. McCartney, hi! I'm reading for, a uh, uh, Zuko? Please, please, whenever you're ready. Come on, uncle, we must capture the Avatar. Um, he's the one I wanna chase. He's the one I wanna hold. I won't let another minute go to waste. I just want him and his beautiful soul. That was beautiful, Mr. McCartney. All right, cool. You were right, Mr. Shyamalan, he's perfect. But I think the funniest thing when it comes to casting is that all the background characters look Asian or Inuit. So where did these three white children emerge from? Why does that matter? I'm adopted. What? Oh my God! Who told you? Justice for Death Patel. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you had to be in this movie, King. I am so sorry. If this movie has one redeeming quality, like if you for like if I was held against my will and that they were like, tell us one good thing about Avatar 2010. I'm like, no, kill me first. I I I would say it would be Death Patel. Is it okay if you tell me your name? The monks named me Ang. Is it okay if you tell me your name? The monks named me Ong. His name is Ong, and he's the Avatar. The reasoning behind why they changed the pronunciation of these names is because they wanted the pronunciation to sound more authentic. Hey, I just, um, I just have a couple, like, one or 18 questions when it comes to your commitment to cultural authenticity on this movie, Mr. Shyamalan. As you know, the Fire Lord has banished his son, the Prince renounced his love of him and will not let him return to the throne unless he finds the avatar. The fire Can you imagine being like a background firebender character just this, having to listen to this speech strong. like, Welcome to dinner! As you know, Prince Zuko is a punk ass bitch and I will spend the next 20 minutes explaining why. Bro, I'm really hungry. I just, I'm just trying to eat my meal here. Dad. Oh good. Let's lock the earthbenders in a prison made of earth. That'll That'll show them. Wait, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We move from town. 
down to town in the Earth Kingdom. We tried to stay out of sight, but Soka became concerned. Going back to discussing the exposition in Percy Jackson, the thing with that exposition is maybe we can debate whether there was too much of it. But what it was was just kind of explaining to the audience backstory and things that the audiences need to learn. The exposition in Avatar The Last Airbender is quite literally just telling us what we are seeing. In the case of Percy Jackson, maybe it was a little bit like, oh, you know, they can do a little more show, not tell. This is a case of, for some reason, they decided they wanted to do show and tell. In this time of war, food is scarce. My brother and I often go hunting for food. Often go hunting for food. I can see you're doing that. You don't need to tell me. Or are you hunting for food? I thought you were learning to play the bongos. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. But the aesthetics of this movie, the scenery, it's kind of pretty. The thing with this, the very slow bending in this movie is, is not that it just looks bad, but it's also, it's like, it doesn't make sense in the context of the universe because what's the point of bending? Like in the time it takes them to do one move, so you could just walk over and punch your opponent in the face. A very accurate depiction of how I have felt Watching the whole movie, Yang. Ong. Um. It's General Eero. Road turned into a Sith. I have brought peace, freedom, justice. I think I've seen this film before. I hate to say it. You know how much I hate to say it. But this, this had me, a, this had me a I will give credit where credit is due. This had me a little emotional. No, 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 but it's not. Sorry, no, no, no. It, it is the music, it is the music. It's not the directing. It's not the writing in the scene. The reason I'm feeling emotions during the scene is because this score is on another level. That is, who is that? That is Grammy, Emmy, and eight, nine time Academy Award nominated James Newton Howard, everybody. And that is the power of a good composer. Because this scene, looking at this scene without that emotional backtracking music behind it, is actually not that emotional. The absolute difference it makes having James Newton Howard's score behind these lukewarm emotional moments, the way it really elevates these moments, um, is it is very impressive what he was able to do with this movie. <sighs> oh, thank God it's over. Is there a thesis to this video? Is there a conclusion we can draw from this? No, my brain is too melted from watching that. I guess it's a question of, is Avatar The Last Airbender adaptable? Avatar The Last Airbender, it's, it's nearly a perfect show. It is nearly perfect. When you try to recreate it, there's, there's nowhere to go but down. You cannot improve on it. The thing with Avatar The Last Airbender is that every part of that show was essential to the storytelling. The filler episodes were essential to all the character arcs. All these little throwaway jokes and lines, they all really built the characters. They built the plot. And when you make an adaptation that has to reduce any of those things, it's going to take away from the story as a whole. The show is animated and there's so much you can do in animation that you just can't do in live action. Luckily for the creators of the new Netflix live action show, when it comes to live action adaptations of Avatar The Last Airbender, um, the bar is not even on the floor. There is no bar. The bar doesn't exist. A bar was not even set. It wasn't even set at floor level. You have one of the best animated shows ever created up here. The bar is at an infinite height. You cannot reach it. Then on the other hand, you have the original live action adaptation. The bar is so low, it is non-existent. So they're at this place where they have an infinitely high bar they can't reach and an infinitely low bar that it's going to be very easy to surpass. I mean, just by casting culturally accurate actors, they've already surpassed the 
non-existent bar that was set by the live action adaptation from 2010 before the show has even started so if they can you know what if they can hit somewhere that is i would say above above the middle above the middle between these two things if they can be in this top half of being closer to the animated than then closer to the live action movie you know what I'll, I'll be happy with that i'll be happy with that we will always have the original avatar the last airbender and and i can live with that though i do wish there was a way i could wipe this movie from my brain there is no movie in bossing say